Christine Cabo Vorel, you are the executive VP of operations and assets at CMA CGM. It's a pleasure to welcome you on this panel. And I would love to hear more about uh, this uh, fantastic flagship industrial project, the Jacques Sade. And beyond LNG, could you also elaborate for us what are the key initiatives that CMA CGM is uh, taking to achieve sustainability in shipping? Thank you very much for inviting us uh, on this uh, panel, Camille. We are very proud and, and pleased uh, to be able to, to address this subject and to, and to uh, give a, a presentation of, uh, of uh, this LNG-powered ship and, and the overall strategy behind them. Uh, indeed, uh, this new um, LNG um, uh, ship and the decision which was taken uh, some time ago by our, our, our leaders, uh, uh, Jacques Saadé and, and Rodolphe Saadé on um, taking the decision to order and build LNG-powered uh, megaships. This is definitely setting a major milestone on the road to sustainability for cleaner transport, cleaner maritime transport. This tremendous project started with one clear vision, uh, which is expressed on the slide by, by Rodolphe Saadé, uh, to build a cleaner maritime transport with the available scalable technology and take action now. Um, it is at the heart of our DNA. Uh, we want to demonstrate it uh, in, in the course of, 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 of the action plan which we are taking. This, uh, the, the launching of this uh, new Jacques Saade um, is a major milestone, but uh, it's only the beginning of a story which uh, will take us uh, uh, to uh, uh, the, the, the a better sustainable maritime shipping and uh, at the end of the, of, of the process, a total decarbonation of the, of the, of the maritime, uh, of the maritime transport, transportation. This project embodies uh, core, the core values of our group, um, which were set by, by our founder Jacques Saadé, boldness, initiative, imagination and, and, uh, and integrity. Uh, as you uh, rightly said, Camille, by 2022, we will operate 26 uh, ships uh, of, uh, with um, LNG, uh, propelled with, with LNG, of which 20 uh, are owned uh, and, and built uh, by uh, CMA CGM and the CMA uh, CGM technical, uh, technical teams. So it's, the, it, it's a vision which is now uh, turning into a very uh, concrete. This ship is here. Uh, she was bunkered uh, uh, last week in Rotterdam, as you said, and and she is now uh, operated and 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 running on 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 the seas of the world with uh, propelled by by LNG. So maybe I can tell you a little bit more uh, about this uh, this this ship, which is a, a, a really a technology technological premiere. Uh, at 23,000 TU capacity, uh, she is 400 meter long, 61 meter wide. She is huge. Um, she she has a tank uh, membrane Mark III low pressure LNG tank of uh, more than 18,000 cubic meter, which makes it possible for us to do a, a, a full run trip. We do only one bunkering session, uh, and she does a, a full run trip from Europe to 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 North Asia and, and back, and and. The, the, the technology uh, uh, allows uh, to keep uh, at a constant minus 161 degree uh, the, 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 LN, the, the gas in, in the tank. And she has a huge engine, 64 megawatt, which is also a, a worldwide premiere. This uh, worldwide uh, premiere is, has been obviously um, uh, built, conceived, designed, realized with uh, 10 leading industrials and, and, and partners, which I will introduce to you in, in a few moments. Besides uh, this uh, specific propulsion, the Jacques Sade has a lot of um, many other even innovation onboarded. Uh, as, we, as we said, uh, hydrodynamics uh, features which are optimized, which help to reduce the, the, the consumption at sea. Uh, the Jacques Sade is capable of um, taking uh, biogas uh, blendings. I will come back to this in a minute. She has obviously smart piloting system uh, and obviously ballast water uh, treatment system. Uh, so all these innovations uh, with the Jacques Sade uh, 
are definitely going into uh, more uh, safety at sea, uh, more sustainability at sea, uh, more, um, more reliability uh, overall for, for, for our customers and our, and our industrial partners. Um, maybe next slide. Okay, uh, I was telling you about the partners who made it possible for CMACGM to to go uh, with this uh, uh, to to go with this adventure and and finally uh, uh, release this this um, super ship. Um, the ship was uh, uh, our partners, uh, CSSC, the shipyard in China. The certification of the ship was made by Bureau Veritas. The engine the engine has been designed by uh, WinGD and the fuel gas handling system by. Silla, the LNG tank designed by the French company uh, GTT, uh, pumps with Creostar and refueling system. Uh, uh, we, we, we set up a full supply chain thanks to Total, uh, the, the port of Rotterdam and uh, the terminal in Rotterdam RWG. So as you see, it is a team, uh, a team achievement uh, with a lot of French, uh, of French uh, efficiency, French expertise, but also uh, worldwide uh, expertise in the in the system. So, um, why is LNG a major milestone on the road to shipping sustainability? It is a major milestone because, as as, as we said, this is today the best um, uh, compromise uh, with uh, what is needed in terms of scale uh, and uh, the, the 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 willingness of the industry to to, to go into more sustainability. Uh, but it is only the beginning. Uh, and we are, as CMACGM, engaged and committed in a continuous improvement path uh, process in the years to come to continue to um, uh, address technology, to continue on our R&D with our industrial partnerships, and to uh, take on uh, in our, um, in our uh, next uh, developments on what the technology will uh, be best able to provide towards achieving a better and better sustainability system for the shipping industry. Um, LNG is only the beginning, uh, but uh, definitely it is today, again, as, as, as I said, the best, uh, the, the best, most efficient technology uh, available. Why we want to give a global sustainable transport solution uh, to our customers? Because maybe we'll hear we'll, we'll hear them uh, a little bit later. Our customers are keen uh, to uh, be able to um, uh, join forces with their uh, uh, transport suppliers uh, to find better ways of shipping goods, of transporting goods uh, throughout throughout the world. Uh, LNG is part of the solution. We are also developing uh, with our customers, uh, as far as land transportation is concerned, innovative um, uh, route uh, with train, uh, because we strongly believe that rail development uh, in Europe, in Asia, and also in the US will also help to reduce the carbon footprint of the transportation overall. As you know, CMACGM is also a group with um, a big uh, international uh, logistic um, business with our, our subsidiary SIVA. Uh, the warehouses in SIVA have to go into uh, the path also of uh, achieving a better carbon footprint. Uh, it's also the case for our terminals where we are uh, looking at uh, electrical means of uh, handling uh, on, on the, on the, on, in, in our terminals. Uh, developing, uh, obviously, uh, solar panels uh, on the warehousing uh, in the terminal facilities. So again, um, it's, it's a combination of a lot of solutions uh, which will help us and our suppliers and our customers to achieve uh, better, uh, better solutions for towards uh, uh, air quality and, uh, and decarbonation. So in, in a nutshell, um, this Jacques Sade is, uh, is, is, has, is, is the result of seven years of research and development. The ship is now there up and running with LNG propulsion, and she will be followed by uh, her sister ships, which have been on order, a total of 26 by 2022. It's the beginning of, uh, of an immense adventure towards uh, better sustainability in shipping. We are proud. Uh, to be pioneer in, the, in, in that, and we are proud to have had uh, along this, uh, this road uh, industrial partners, uh, some of which are in this panel who can 
participate uh, to uh, this uh, effort which the shipping industry is putting together. Yeah, thank you very much, Camille, and uh, thank you, I mean, also uh, to BCG and CMSGM to invite me to this wonderful panel. Uh, and thank you also, Christine, for setting the scene. Uh, I think uh, you, you said most of it, and I will try to emphasize what it takes from the angle of a broad energy company uh, to uh, contribute uh, to the energy transition, especially here in the shipping. Let me start with uh, the CMSGM Total Partnership uh, because it's a, a key point in the story. Uh, we have had with CMSGM a, a, a very long lasting commercial relationship. Uh, Total being a supplier of marine fuels, uh, especially in Europe and in Asia, and of marine lubricants as well, uh, where we often joined uh, our efforts to develop innovative solutions with CMSGM. So we share with CMSGM basically uh, some uh, values. Uh, we, we share a vision, uh, especially on, on, on going uh, to uh, the journey of the, of the decarbonization. Uh, and and the, the same as in CMSGM, I mean, in total, we started investigating LNG for, for the shipping back in 2011, if I remember well. I, I was in a strategy division at that time. Uh, so uh, quite a good alignment. So in a world, uh, when back in 2017, uh, we signed a partnership with CMSGM and there's a form of a, a MOU uh, to investigate further the, this energy transition, uh, I think our teams could easily uh, mix, understand each other, develop new ideas and, and work quite e efficiently to the solution. And, and, and I mean, quite rapidly, LNG became uh, the, the focus of, of this uh, working group. Uh, then the decision with my uh, CMSGM to invest in, in this technology uh, for, for this flagship uh, uh, fleet uh, of uh, FAL-1 uh, led us to uh, commit uh, to supply uh, them first in Rotterdam, uh, which has now started, and later on in Marseille and, and Singapore uh, for a total amount of 0.6 million ton uh, of LNG per year. So this and it's quite a number, it's a, uh, an important number when you look at the market, but it's indeed not yet enough to, to, to say uh, that the, the full industry uh, has uh, embarked in this uh, journey. Um, so that for Total, for uh, being a, a broad energy group, the second uh, most important, the second largest LNG player in the world, we are committed to reduce the carbon footprint of our customers. Um, with this ambition uh, to reach net zero by 2050. This partnership with uh, CMSGM uh, is very flagship for us, is, is uh, central. Uh, and uh, we have put our integrated supply chain to the service of CMSGM LNG fuel fleet uh, that we have further developed uh, by investing in this uh, LNG bunker vessel. Uh, so my first takeaway here is that for um, a new fuel like LNG to develop, uh, well, you need to go far beyond the usual customer supplier relationship. So here it is. Uh, now uh, let me introduce you. Uh, it's on the on the picture. Uh, the Gas Agility. Uh, she is Total's first LNG bunker vessel, uh, the world's largest of her kind, and we are quite proud of. Of her, uh, as you may uh, think, she's smaller than the CMA CGM Jacksa did because she's only 134 meters long uh, uh, compared to the uh, close to 400 of uh, the Jacksa uh, And she was built in the same shipyard uh, uh, in China. Uh, the delivery took place in the second quarter of uh, this year. So, in, in a word, we, we had many, many challenges that are uh, related to the nature of LNG. Uh, but I think that they were quite, most of them the same as, as for CMS, GM. Uh, we are dealing first with a, a temperature of minus 161 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature at, at which uh, uh, methane uh, is uh, in, the, in liquid form. And we need to store uh, this uh, methane uh, at this temperature. Uh, for that, we selected the same uh, technology innovative technology provided by the French company uh, GTT uh, to, to make this, uh, uh, in this tank. Um, 
The second challenge on which I, I want to tell you a word is this compatibility uh, that we need uh, to ensure with the customer vessel. And this, in a word, uh, was made easier because we build the vessel in the same shipyard. Uh, but we need to ensure a smooth uh, connection, a good transfer rate. That's uh, one of the challenges. So, uh, in a word, uh, here to, to have uh, the design of such vessel, it's again a, a close partnership with uh, CMS ship, CMS AGM, and with this joint approach uh, ended with an outstanding performance on the first uh, bunkerings in terms of state, safety, time, and quantity delivered. So, last but not least, yes. Uh, my last point in, in here is that the shipping must now uh, have this energy transition, and, and I want to stress this, the position of LNG in this transition. Um, IMO has made very clear that the regulations they are putting in place are both for air quality matters and green greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which uh, for that LNG is the answer uh, available today. Uh, we already said the performances. Uh, but there's also with LNG, a clear bridge, a uh, very clear bridge to the next generation of fuels. Uh, it's what I call a pathway to zero carbon. Uh, because we, and we have demonstrated it today, uh, together with LNG can come biogas, which uh, is a tremendous reduction of uh, uh, greenhouse gases uh, in, the, in the gas chain. Um, there can come later uh, synthetic methane, uh, e-methane, uh, made of uh, hydrogen, and the all hydrogen economy uh, we will suddenly uh, feed uh, this uh, this uh, pathway. Uh, so, I think, uh, in a nutshell, that uh, LNG today is the best option. It's available. It is scalable. It's a choice today for a new build, uh, but it is also uh, bridging the energy mix of the shipping industry until zero carbon fuel can take it all. And that would be my conclusion for, for today. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jerome. And I think what I'm taking away from what you're saying is that uh, LNG is indeed available today, uh, but it's also the first step in a path ahead. And uh, uh, I think it's very encouraging to see that there is really a path towards decarbonization that can be started in a very positive way and then followed through uh, even more importantly. Okay, excellent. Many, many thanks for the introduction. Also, thank you to invite me. It's a pleasure to be here and maybe just allow me to say one sentence about Sphera, uh, because probably it's not as known as, as uh, um, the other speakers here. So Sphera is a global um, software data and consultancy company with the focus on operational risk management, product stewardship, environmental health and safety. And we help organizations around the globe to work on their sustainability journeys on a product and a corporate level strategy development, greenhouse gas reporting, life cycle assessment, feasibility studies, data monitoring, all that stuff. And today I want to introduce the study we performed for CLNG and SGMF. There are both two organizations in the LNG, uh, LNG world, both promoting LNG as a marine fuel uh, together with around 160 members, international global organizations. And the, the, the target or the, the goal of this study was to develop an accurate, up-to-date and reliable analysis on the greenhouse gas performance of LNG as a marine fuel and compared to conventional fuels, oil-based fuels. And we decided to follow the life cycle assessment approach by the ISO standard. We looked at the different supply chains around the globe um, for the different bunker regions. We looked at oil-based ships at, um, and, and uh, gas-based ships. We were considering the most common technologies. Um, I come to that in a, in a second. And what was also very special that uh, part of the ISO uh, concept, there was a critical review on the study performed by us. Um, and that was done by independent reviews. And I think, wait, wait, just have a second. I think what is very key here is that for the analysis, we were collecting a lot of primary data from all the main manufacturers, engine manufacturers, from um, oil and gas suppliers, and also some, some operators to, to get the most up-to-date and reliable data. And based on that, we were developing a, a model. We're using our uh, internal Gavi software, which is the most common uh, used LCA software to, to perform such studies. And then we were calculating the carbon footprint. And, Maybe now, moving to the next one, please. And 
one of the results um, shown here um, on, on the left hand side, you see the results for the two stroke engine. So for the, those of you not so familiar, that's the engines used for the deep sea shipping. On the right hand side, the four stroke engines more for the coastal and, and inner um, yeah, um, um, inland tr waterway transportations. And as we heard before already a, a couple of times, so um, there is potential to save up to 21% when using um, um, LNG vessels compared to um, oil-based vessels. And you also see that the supply chain roughly has a contribution about, I don't know, 15%, let's say, while the, most of the emissions are released in the combustion. And these all include all the greenhouse gases, so CO2, but all the methane emissions along the supply chains from the production of the LNG up to the methane uh, slip in the, in the engines, if there are any. If you just look at the, the engine itself, um, there's an, an, an um, yeah, savings up to 28%, which contributing also to the IMO uh, target ambition uh, 2050. And really in, in, a, in a nutshell, I mean, what, what was also said already, um, I mean, LNG is a fully compliant viable solution, which is available on the market today. Um, so you, you can simply purchase it. Um, other alternatives like hydrogen, ammonium, battery electricity, whatever is discussed out there are not available. In particular, if we talk about deep sea shipping, uh, where huge quantities are um, needed, then I think one of the biggest advantage is the, the, the contribution to reduce the carbon footprint of international shipping and the contribution to the IMO uh, targets up to 21% over the whole life cycle. Um, and also, and we also heard and numbers also shown here before were, were calculated so that uh, for the air quality indicators like sulfur, particular matters and, and uh, NOx emissions, there are savings up to 99% simply also because um, LNG is sulfur free um, and has less particles and this is relevant for ports and coastal areas. And I think from an outlook and also to bring that a little bit in perspective is that, I mean, LNG is a new fuel. It's not completely new, but it, it's new on a, on a large scale. Um, and there's a lot of ongoing optimization going on. On the supply chain, um, I mean, all the, the major oil and gas companies declared targets. They, they group like in the OGCI uh, to develop uh, methane reduction targets over the next years. So we can also, um, already count on that the emissions will be reduced there. And there will be also, you know, uh, further development on the engine side um, for, the, for the LNG vessels as well as on the methane slip. Um, so there will be further improvements. In other words, the, the advantage will further increase uh, compared to oil-based um, fuels. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's also a, a technology and a fuel which can be interchanged um, with this bio LNG um, or with um, also um, LNG produced via the PTX technology. So power to gas um, where um, in, in parts of the, um, of the world where a lot of renewable energy is available, um, such kind of fuels can be produced and, and then substitute uh, over the time LNG, which is also making it very, a very good and very, um, Fantastic. you know, future oriented uh, fuel. And last thing to mention, we are working on an update on the study, uh, to, uh, again, together with CLNG and SGMS, which is planned to be published in 2021 uh, in the first end of first quarter. And in this study, we're not only looking at LNG, we also look at uh, different other alternative uh, fuels. Thank you very much uh, for having me here. No. And I come back to your to, to your question in in a sec. We we as we sit between the customers and 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 the asset providers, whether it's airlines or shipping lines, uh, we started to look look into this already many years ago, and uh, we felt that there would be more pressure coming up from from the consumer, from the customer, and in the end, behind the cust our customer, the customer of the shipping lines is the the end consumer, and we see that pressure coming. And we have to do something on this. And that's why the whole subject of sustainability, we took this very seriously. We start to analyze uh, all our emissions, uh, emissions of carriers, of airlines, our own emissions. And uh, that's what we said. We have to do something 
much faster than to reach the 1.5 degrees of uh, Paris, because if uh, that, that's the whole target of this. And that's why we also support what CMA is doing here with this huge investment into LNG, but it's for us an interim solution. I'll come back to this in a second. So we decided, if you go to the next slide, we, we decided as a company, uh, after we had analyzed all uh, our own emissions under scope one and two, that we wanted to be carbon neutral after this year. So uh, all our emissions, and of course, as a non-asset provider, not having directly vessels, not having own planes, it's easier than for a shipping line or for an airline. Uh, but still, uh, we, we, we made a huge step forward. We reduced our emissions and the remaining uh, emissions, which we cannot get, uh, get rid of, uh, where we cannot buy renewable energies, uh, we are offsetting. And I, uh, I'm very happy that uh, CMA announced yesterday a similar step with their ACT program that they are also looking into offsetting as an interim solution. But more important, we then uh, decided that as of 2030, we, we want to be carbon neutral also for scope three, meaning all the emissions which uh, carriers, uh, whether it's airlines, shipping lines, mid, together with our customers, we want to reduce. And LNG is one way to reduce it. Uh, and biofuel is another uh, option. Here, that's what we are also discussing with CMA. Uh, the, the biofuel we see as an option to get rid of the CO2 right away because the final target has to be that we have non-carbon fuels. So LNG, it's good, but it's an interim solution. And uh, the good thing is uh, with the 20% less CO2, which we see, it makes these vessels far more competitive when it comes to CO2 emissions. And we see a trend with customers that they start to choose vessels, individual vessels, services mm -hmm. with lower CO2 footprints. So we can only support this. And we, the, the first consumer companies in the next one to two years will have this on their labels, on their products, which product produced less CO2, even in their supply chain. And then the pressure will increase even further for other companies to follow this. Well, thank you, Camille, and, and, and good morning, everyone. Um, it was quite, quite a challenge because at the beginning of the project, seven years ago, there was quite some uh, major roadblocks. I mean, the rules were not existing. The engine uh, was not existing at all. Uh, the containment system uh, was existing, but the usage of that containment system um, um, was not the one we wanted for. Um, so we had to reinvent uh, and be uh, extremely innovative. And, and I like very much what uh, the previous panelist was saying. This was only possible with a strong commitment of our partners, GTT, CSSC, WinGD, especially the, on the engine side, uh, which was most probably the biggest challenge to solve, um, as well with, um, with the others' uh, partners. The key word of this project was uh, innovative mindset, openness, strong collaboration, uh, same goal. Everyone was, was trying to reach the same goal, which has uh, lead to the success of that project. But in a nutshell, one of the key uh, technical uh, uh, issue was the tank itself, the gas chain, and the engine, which had to be fully developed from A to, uh, to Z. So um, um, quite a successful project. I think this is a very important question and um, who will pay for it? In the end, uh, it will be the consumer will pay for this. And uh, so that somebody has to pay for, for produ producing a product, for transporting a product, and then uh, the producer will put the price, uh, the production cost into the price, whatever it is. And then in the end, we heard it from Carrefour, uh, the consumer will pay for it. The good news is transportation is so cheap, whether we now increase and some, some shippers uh, might not like to hear this, but in the end, they know whether, whether we increase our freight rates by three, $400 because we find a new non-carbon fuel in future uh, per shoe, per TV set, per bottle of wine, uh, we talk cents. And so it does not really, it has very little influence uh, on, the, on the end product. And, uh, and the other good news is we are discussing this now with a lot of customers and we see uh, 
from the first customer, they say, yes, we are prepared to pay for this because we are, we know we can uh, differentiate ourselves against uh, our competitors. And uh, I foresee in the next two, three years, uh, the first customers, as I said earlier, they put it on their product, on their label, and uh, that will increase pressure on the next customer to say, hey, I also need a sustainable solution. I want to go for a non-carbon fuel or I go for an LNG vessel and uh, who knows in the end perhaps uh, if a lot of people want to put their cargo on an LNG vessel uh, the vessel will become so full that a carrier will say then I will ask for a little higher price even and uh, so I'm optimistic but in the end we will not get a clean uh, a cleaner uh, uh, environment uh, we will not get it for free and uh, that's what we have to explain to consumers and I think we are getting there. And maybe just to echo that, um, just would love to, to see whether uh, Hadi or Bertrand, I mean, you face the end customer. Uh, do you share that view? Do you think this is going to be doable? Thank you, Camille. Yeah. I mean, just a few words. I, I share what has been said. Um, historically, the automotive industry has been doing internal efficiency in terms of design and production. And this was fueling, if I may say, the technological progress. So kind of neutral to the end consumer. However, today we see that the shift to electrification is partially sustained by government incentive to make the first step. And we are working, uh, we believe that by 2025, 26 on the usage part, we will be at par with um, internal combustion engines in terms of cost per, per mile. So, um, our belief is that we need as industry as a whole chain, not only auto, but also with our partners to improve uh, the efficiency of the operations in order to fuel this transition. Maybe we have a peak, but at the end, we need to come back to the same economical equation. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't see too many customers willing to overpay for sustainability. Mm -hmm. So we need at one point in time to land at the same level of uh, that what this product and services we are offering today. And this should come by maybe better organization, but basically but by working with our partners and, and, and the whole ecosystem to optimize and, to, and to, to, to do it differently in order to meet the same. 